the primary objective is, can we keep a stable and secure environment for these servers? Many businesses, the server rooms and data centers are central to their business process and cannot afford any risks whatsoever. We have to give these pieces of equipment the right quality of air and the, quiet, the right level of security. And then the big wish list. We want low cost, low cost, low cost of everything. We want a low environmental impact where possible. Let's use less electricity, let's have less of a carbon impact. And also, if we can avoid the use of refrigeration, then we can avoid the use of refrigerants, which have their own separate environmental impact. Security and resilience, or redundancy. We have to build in security, we have to build in fail-safe systems so that when things go wrong, as we can never legislate against, we've got appropriate backups. And, where possible, where can we make this simple? What most people are looking for is to concentrate on their core activities, not having to become experts or having high technical skills to look after their infrastructure. So let's look at the operating conditions that are required in a data centre. And here we've got a typical, um, this is the um, Ice Color, which is a, uh, a, a separate company which is owned by M247. You guys are familiar with data centre and server rooms, will recognise you know, the cold aisle containment. In that cold aisle containment we're pushing air up through the raised floor, through grills, and we're trying to achieve the following. The right temperature, humidity, cleanliness and redundancy. However, many people in the sector don't currently understand what the modern standards are for those parameters. And that's what I'll explain over the next couple of minutes. So let's look at temperature and humidity. Left side of the axis is relative humidity, temperature across the bottom. Now most people believe they've got to maintain their data center or server room in that patch there. Around 21 degrees centigrade and around 50-55% relative humidity. That's what people have been brought up knowing and believing. Why? Well we know if we increase the temperature we'll start to get equipment failure. Things will blow up at high temperature. What a lot of people don't appreciate is if you increase the temperature of air going onto a server, the little fan starts to speed up and can consume an enormous amount of energy itself. Low temperatures. Now, most low temperatures and the standards which are set are an economic, not a, temp not a technical standard. These standards are set to stop people running their refrigeration equipment too cold and losing further performance. High humidities, high relative humidities. Everyone knows if we get condensation in any sort of building or any sort of equipment, that's going to lead to problems. With printed circuit boards, there is also an issue of a thing called CAF development, which is a filament development which can grow on, on printed circuit boards and can cause failures. But that only happens at high temperatures and very high humidities. Low humidities associated with tape stability, the old paper tapes and paper card systems. And also low humidities have been associated with a thing called ESD, electrostatic discharge. So people in the data centre and server and IT world appreciate these factors exist, but many people don't understand where the modern lines are drawn. So let's look at a few standards. You would expect IBM to have some fairly rigorous standards. You take a standard server from them and suddenly you see that temperature spec is 10 to 30 degrees centigrade with relative humidities 8 to 80 percent. When people look at their equipment, most of them have never been given the environmental operating specifications and that's a surprise to most people. 
That's the key reason why we can start using a radically different form of cooling for modern equipment. So if we go back to M24-7, you will see in Manchester, it's cold most of the time. Okay, on that graph there you can see the red line is the ambient temperature and the blue line is the temperature of the air coming off what's called a 90% efficient evaporative cooler. The ambient temperature will just reach 25 degrees centigrade but with a bit of local heating, southern facing buildings you might really get a, a true inlet air temperature or ventilation system of about 30 degrees centigrade. However, passing the air over one of those wetted filter pads means that the air temperature would never normally go above 20 degrees centigrade. So that simple wetted filter pad in an evaporative cooler will give us an unlimited amount of air below 20 degrees centigrade without any need whatsoever for refrigeration. Let's look at this on the psychrometric chart. Psychrometric chart is the tool that engineers use to understand the relationship between air and water. There is temperature across the bottom, the horizontal axis, and specific humidity vertically. The hotter air gets, the more water it can support. Most data centres and server rooms have de been designed to those guidelines. The typical UK guidelines that you find by, from SIBSI, Chartered Institute of Building Service Engineers. 19 to 23 degrees centigrade, 45 to 55% relative humidity. That is what your close control crack is designed to do. However, if you go to the 2008 ASHRAE standards, which is the American Society of Heating and Refrigeration Air Conditioning Engineers, they revised their specification in 2008. And this is the standard that you would use if you were going to build, let's say, a tier four data center, a data center of the highest standard of resilience and redundancy and reliability. Their new standards are 18 to 27 and talk about dew points rather than, rather than um, maximum humidity, so dew point of 15, po uh, 15 degrees centigrade in that yellow patch. But they also give us a little bit of latitude as well, and that's the design conditions, but ASHRAE also provide an allowable zone which you're allowed to drift into short space of time. Now you see, this zone that we need to operate within, even to operate the very highest level of, re of reliability data centers, is really starting to grow. If you look at your equipment, that's a typical specification for modern equipment. Really quite a wide range. If you take a ventilation system with evaporative cooling, you can put yourself into a zone there and provide 100% temperature compliance and about 99% compliance against ASHRAE Class 1. Now I'll explain how from that we can engineer and implement a system to actually exploit that.